So hello internet, today we'll take a look at uh, the second tutorial. Uh, this one will be about um, the geometry in the world did it. Uh, we'll talk about how to create a new geometry type like box, cylinder, like other primitive. Um, we will also take a look at the two different way of, of uh, how we can edit edit that geometry um, there's like two main way to edit geometry there's the brush editing mode and the geometry editing mode um, so I have I will create a new uh, scene or a new level we call it Kiki 2 So this is a clean empty scene. Okay, so the first thing I will tell before actually creating a new geometry and brush uh, is the grid, the grid system. We talked about it uh, in the previous video about uh, the interface. Um, we talked about the grid already. Um, so, but I want to talk about it again because the grid is really important. Um, uh, what? Uh, so um, it's really important because with the grid, uh, every object you create in the geometry, every like vertex geometry uh, stuff, it will be snap. It will be snapped on the grid. Um, so this means the size of the grid will depend of uh, of the detailing we are at. So if we start like with big shape with our level, like we start we start with like the room, uh, corridor, uh, so like the big shapes. Uh, so we use a big grid, and then the more we go into into the details, the smaller details, the smaller the grid will become to create those uh, details. So uh, when we are at the, the stairs, the window, the doors, then the grid becomes smaller. And when we are at the um, even smaller stuff, detail like the railings, the ladders, and <coughs> the little, um, I don't know, like little border or details, we are uh, at an even smaller grid size. So again, to change the grid size, you must uh, over your mouse on one of the viewport, the, the one you want to change the grid. Because yeah, it's a bit annoying, but the grid is changed. Uh, it's not changed for like every viewport at once. It's every single viewport, uh, which is a bit annoying, I, I found, I think. Um, but we must work with that. So you over your mouse over uh, on the viewport, you want to change the grid and you, you tap uh, the minus button make it smaller um, and you tap the plus button to make it bigger so now I will start with a grid of uh, one meter for every uh, viewport and to know this uh, to know the size of the grid you must check the at the bottom here the bottom of my screen it's, it, it tells me the grid is at one meter and you must do that for every viewport like uh, one meter um, so now all my grid are like one meter so it's one meter is pretty big one meter is what I I will start to use is the size as when I start to use uh, to build big shapes so to create a new brush um, we uh, we'll start with like uh, I will start with the different methods. The first, the first method uh, to create new brush or geometry is uh, to use primitive. To do that, what I like to do is uh, right-click in the viewport, add, and you can uh, select one of the different uh, primitive type. 
like a box, cylinder, pyramid, sphere, dome, and a plane. Uh, we will start with our uh, famous box at first. Uh, so this is the size of it in uh, centimeter. So if I want to have uh, uh, one meter, I will use 100. Uh, so now I have a, I think it's one meter, I have a one meter box and it's at the center of the world. So as you can see it, uh, every time I create a new object, it will appear, um, it will appear uh, in the center of the marker. So, so again, again, how to you uh, to move your marker is with uh, by holding X on your keyboard, you can snap your marker on the grid. So if I create a new, if I move a marker on the side like this, and I create an another a new box, it will appear uh, on my marker. So your box uh, is probably a random color for you. If you want to apply a default material to it, you can go in the uh, material tab. You go in material, this is all the default material. You can choose uh, um, like a grid, a grid material, which is a default one. And to you select it and to apply it, you either you can uh, click this button, apply material here at the top, or you can uh, press Ctrl and T to apply it. So for example, if I have like invisible, it's black and I want a grid floor, select it, select the object you want to apply to and hit Ctrl T and voila, the material is applied. Same thing for this one, Ctrl T, apply this one. Okay. Uh, so. Okay, so this is one of the methods to create object. You place the marker where you want the object to be, uh, the brush to be. Like I can, I can uh, change my marker in the different view by holding X again. And when I create, um, when I create a new object, a box, it creates my object and the marker. So this is the first method of creating new brush. Uh, the second method is to um, draw. We can draw the shape that we want inside one of the uh, 2D view. Um, like if I take the top view, this one. Uh, remember to zoom in it, you can use the 1, 2, 3, 4 key on your keyboard to um, like zoom in one of the view. 2 for the top view, 1 for the 3D view. Okay. Um, if you so, the second question method is to use the uh, draw tool. So, and you can draw the shape you want. So, to do that, you just select the view you want, do the view, and then press spacebar, and a little red dot will appear. Then move your cursor to create a line, and when you press uh, spacebar again it will create a new uh, line like this. Spacebar, I have a new line like this and it's snapped to the grid and then uh, can move like here and then spacebar again. Spacebar, 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 spacebar. And you can see this turn um, purple because this is a concave shape and you cannot create concave shape just like in Hammer for Alpha 5 2 So to fix this, I'm not sure. Um, there is a way to like uh, rewind, but I don't know. I know there's a way like to rewind your steps, but I don't know it uh, yet. So I will just redo it. Uh, <coughs> this is concave, actually. Um, so yeah, it must be convex. Spacebar, uh, spacebar, spacebar, and uh, we can close the shape. And this shape will appear here, I think. It will appear here, but it will start at the marker height. So 
So when we uh, close the shape, it will ask us how, how much high the shape will extrude. So if I say one meter, it will be uh, 100 centimeter. And the shape appears where I draw it here. And um, okay, so how it works is it appears where I draw it, but the high it will snap at the marker. Like if you look the marker here, the shape, the top of the shape is snap at the marker, and then it extrude. It, it will extrude from there with my with my one meter height which is one, one grid square, like perfect fit. So this is the uh, second creation method of creating brushes. And the last creation method is to go in, um, now I'm currently in uh, brush mode, which I, forget, I forgot to say at the beginning, but that's okay. Um, I'm in brush mode. So brush mode, remember, it's control B, brush mode. Now I will go in geometry mode to do the third uh, creation method. So control G, uh, J. I now I'm in uh, geometry mode. You can see I'm selecting vertex. That, that This is for later. And I will do the same thing. I will, but now I will uh, choose my height position with my marker. So I will choose to put it here. This is my height of it. And I will, from the top view, I will put it here. And I will do the same thing. I will draw a shape. So space bar, um, space bar, space bar again, and then close. And when this one will close, it will only create a plane. So as you can see, instead of asking me to extrude it, uh, in geometry mode, it will create a plane, a plane instead. So this is flat, like a ground. With uh, So I just draw a ground of this shape. And as you can see, uh, the, the height of it is at my marker position. My marker is on the corner and it's is it snap perfectly where my marker is and the logic of it is from uh, the top left it spawn at the top left of, of my marker and then expand from the top left to the bottom right just just like uh, all the NES game <laughs> where everything starts from the top left well it's like that from most of the like program Top left is the origin of most stuff, or center, but here is top left. <coughs> uh, so this, those are the three, three, uh, three creation methods. The next thing I will take a look at um, is, <laughs> let me take my note. Um, I will talk about uh, how to do selection like how to select object, how to select brushes in different ways. Um, if you go in, uh, I will go back to brush, brush mode with control B. And uh, selection is pretty simple. Uh, you want, you select the object you click. So if I click this box, it select this box. If I click this, it select the object I'm clicking. So that, that's really self-explanatory. Now, what, what uh, if I want to select more than one? I want to select, I have this box selected and I want to select my ground. I need to hold shift and then select my ground. Now I have both selected and I can hold shift to select more like this. Now all of them are selected. If I want to uh, deselect all of them, I can just select one of them and one of them and, and it will deselect all if i want to select everything i can hit control a select which uh select everything just like uh just like any software basically except blender for some reason <laughs> so okay 
Uh, if I want to rem remove a selection, I can... I think it's control. If I hold control and I select this box, it will remove it from my selection. So I can add with sh holding shift. I holding shift, I add to my selection. Uh, holding control, I remove from my selection. Um, to select a group, like if I want to like drag a selection, I can just. Uh, look at what I want to select and then I can uh, click and hold my mouse button and it will create a selection rectangle and, and then I let go I let go of the mouse button and it will select everything in the rectangle so again pretty uh, it's a pretty common thing um, I can do that also in the 2d view I can in the 2d view I can select a group of object like uh, a brush like this um, the next, uh, the important, really, really important thing uh, to uh, know about uh, selection is um, how to hide and how to isolate a selection. If I want to hide the selection, I can right click, I go to selection and I can uh, uh, click hide selected, so they will be hidden. If I want to uh, unhide everything, I can go to selection and go uh, um, unhide inverse, I think, or or uh, wait. Uh, unhide selected. Yeah. Okay. You can check unhide selected to uh, make them visible again. Or I think you can because I don't see uh, an hide all. So if this is hidden selection hide, and now something is deselected, and I want to unhide everything, I can go to my um, node tree, and I can select my folder of selection, and then I can right click and unhide all node, and everything is now back to visible. This is what I was looking for. Um, the next thing is how to isolate a selection. If I want to isolate this alone from the rest, I can right click selection and say hide and first, I think. So it will isolate this. And if I want to do the reverse of that, I can do hide, unhide and first or selection. Uh, yeah, item verse to isolate and then to put back a normal on item verse. Uh, but it's recommended that you use, uh, you use shortcuts for that key keyboard shortcuts. So my shortcut are uh, I don't know what to call it on my keyboard, but like the the semicolon semicolon thing. So with a shortcut, I can isolate my selection really fast like like bam deselect everything and bam select isolate selection so it's really fast and I can hide it too probably like mm, or maybe I didn't oh yeah this one hide on hide hide on hide with the uh, keyboard shortcuts so those shortcut those shortcuts I made them myself. Um, it's it's really recommended that you do that because if you want to work fast, like I want to select this, this, and this, and I want to isolate them, I can just use my shortcut and they are isolated from the rest, which is really really useful. And then I can using shortcut because right click and then doing that all the time. Uh, like when you work a lot, uh, when you're doing a lot of work, doing this every time, it uh, it adds on. Like it adds and adds, it adds on. You want to use keyboard shortcuts, and you can see the shortcut there at the right of it. So remember to set new shortcut. You go in the edit, uh, and then edit key configuration, and you can uh, set your shortcut there. So to uh, find the uh, hide and unhide. 
you can type off your, on your keyboard uh, the starting letter of what you want to find. So hide, and then you see I have hide frozen node, hide inverse, hide selected, and I can do my shortcut. So it's really easy to find what you want by typing the name. Um, if you, if, uh, if I'm lost and like I, I'm here, I'm just lost and I want to find hide, I just type, type hide and you know, you see, I'm at the good spot. So super useful. <coughs> okay, so the next thing, just a little break. Okay, next thing. Um, now we'll talk about. <laughs> okay, as you can see, the object we, uh, the brush we created, are pretty static right now. We didn't move them; we just created them at the marker position. But now we want to move them around. We want to rotate them. We want to scale them. So I will talk about how to do all of those three how to move, how to rotate, how, how to scale and also how to uh, uh, mir uh, mirror, mirror or to do a mirror like a symmetry on your selection uh, so the first thing is how to move them so how to move uh, the brushes you want to um, well the the easiest thing is just to you see like this bounding box here this is the bounding box of my selection um, you can just like uh, put your mouse in one of the uh, view you want to move in and put your mouse in the middle like this and then you just hold the m uh, mouse button and you drag it and it will move it from the now I am in the top view so it moves from like the top view, like this. If I want to move from this view, I do the same thing and now it moves, if I check here, now it moves from this view. If I go in this view, it moves from this view. Um, it's always the best to work in the, um, the 2D view because everything is like really like perfectly align and snap when you do that. If you move in the 3D view, it will move like from your camera, so it will move like in diagonal and every uh, your grid will break. And you don't want the grid to break, you always want most of the time or even all the time you want uh, the uh, everything snap on the grid, so everything fit perfectly. Mostly for like the big shapes. The big shapes you want them snap on the grid. For the smaller details then you can start to have stuff uh, not snap. But everything like big details, medium details, everything you want it to be snap on the grid. So this is why we work in the 2D view most of the time. I can also take a single uh, selection and I can move this one like this, same thing. And as you can see I can see my old the old position of it like there's like a ghost of the of my box this is where it was before I do the move and when where uh, when I'm doing the move the ghost disappear and a new ghost appear at my new spots which is not my old spot because I move it again um, so I can also move an object by going in one of the view and using my uh, direction key on my keyboard. So if I want to move it up, I go in this side view here and I press the up key and it will move up by uh, the grid size. So my grid is my grid is at uh, one meter. So each time I press up, it moves uh, one meter, go down one meter. I can also uh, move it on the side with uh, the left and right. Left, right, move on the side. If I over my mouse on the top view, I can also move it from the top view with the arrow key. Side, up, down, like this. 
if I want to move it on a smaller grid, I can reduce my grid. So I hit minus. Now I move at uh, 50 centimeter. So now if I move, it will move by 50 centimeter increment instead instead of one meter. Go back to one meter. Um, now, as you can see, like it's it's not the edge are not snapped to my one meter, but if I go smaller, it snap on my uh, 50 meter. Um, so the next thing is how to rotate the selection. Uh, I will actually go on a smaller grid. I will go 50 meter just to have everything snap better, like this. And now I will talk about rotation. So how to rotate my selection or my brush. Well, it's more about the selection because you can have like multiple brush selected and it will do a rotation around with that. But if I start with one, uh, when you want to rotate something, you want to choose the origin point of the rotation, like the X, the um, yeah, the origin point. And uh, to do to do that, we'll we'll use the marker again. So Alt X place the marker at one of the uh, you know one of the corner or the the middle or the side. This is where it will rotate, like the origin, the anchor, basically. So now I do the top view, I, can, I do the side view, clack, snap side view, snap top view. If I look inside my 3D, I can see my marker is snap right in the corner. So when I will start the rotation, it will rotate from that anchor. <coughs> so now I want to rotate it from the top view. Um, to do that, you want to. Uh, there's like two ways. The first uh, method is to use um, is to hold control, and then you want to press one of the uh, arrow key, like one of the directional key arrow key of your keyboard, like this, and you see it rotates by uh, 45 degree this way, and it rotates from. Uh, the marker just as I said now this is a rotation from the top view if I do a rotation from the side view here it will rotate this way if I do a rotation from this other side view it will rotate this way so you see it rotate around my marker and it rotate by 45 degree which is uh, which is really uh, really useful to have it perfectly snapped on the grid. Um, if I rotate it from my 3D view, you will see why using the, the 2D view is better than 3D because 3D it will rotate from the camera. So it will do something like this. And this, my friend, is really trash. <laughs> because now everything is like um, discon everything is like disconnected from the grid and it's, it's all chaos <laughs> so control Z control Z control Z okay the other uh, other way we can rotate it is by holding uh, N on the keyboard like again we choose we over the mouse on one of the view on one of the 2d view then we hold n and this will rotate uh, more smoothly so i'm holding n and i'm i am dragging my mouse and it will do like a more a smoother rotation The next thing I will do is the scaling. So if I want to change the size of this box, um, uh, yeah, if I want to uh, change the size, uh, I can press uh, press M on my keyboard uh, or uh, M. Okay. Press M 
and you have this uh, option to scale selected and you have scale by percentage uh, or fit to world unit I use a scale by percentage and you can choose a like, scale texture with selection uh, option but I will talk about that when uh, in the texturing uh, tutorial so if I want to scale it down by uh, half of it it will be uh, 50% and if I press OK, it will have uh, scaled down by 50%. Which means it snap on the grid on a smaller grid, like uh, like uh, a grid of 5 cm. It is snap on a 5 cm grid. <coughs> so Ctrl Z. So this is uh, like uh, the way to scale it. Uh, your the the object or the selection you can do the same thing like if I select this and this I can do both like the rotation like this or I can do also the scaling it works on like on a selection everything I just said work on a selection of many brushes okay and also when you do a multiple selection you can see like there's like a a bounding box like there's like a bounding box around the selection this showed like the bounding box of your selection it's just a little detail uh, I like um, so the other way you want to scale uh, stuff which is like the the way you want to, to scale uh, that the way you, you will scale uh, excuse me um, the, the, the way I, I just show you how to scale with the M key like this this is something you don't use a lot because it can go off the grid which we don't like again so uh, what we do instead is that we use the um, those um, you see like those uh, handle handles here like this and when I use that I can scale in uh, in a direction of the handle and it will also snap to the grid so I can scale in this direction like this I scale down I press I choose like one of the side and you see my uh, mouse cursor is becoming like arrows then I want to hold my mouse button and I want to drag my mouse and when I drag it scale in that direction and it also snap on the grid the grid I have now so this is the proper the proper way we will scale our brushes we can do that in different direction like this and of course we and of course we can do it in all the view Now the next thing is, um, oh yeah, I forgot one thing. I forgot to talk about uh, how to do a symmetry or a mirror, mirror of the selection we have. So how to do that? The first thing is to, I will move that to a proper, a more uh, free space, like here. Like by dragging, just as we saw, or by or or by using the arrow key to move. And I will uh, now. The first thing is you want to choose uh, like the mirror position with the marker. Mm, actually, actually no, the marker has nothing to do with uh, a mirror. Um, the mirror will happen from the center of the bounding box of the selection so if I have one object selected it will happen from the middle of it and if I have um, a more object selected it will happen from the center of the selection like of the of the bounding box so if I do a mirror from those two objects 
and I do selection uh, mirror selection and left right it will you see they, they flip from the left to the right of the center of the section if I do that from uh, up and down it's always from the top view I mean you can do it from one of the side view but the um, like the nom the nomenclature the, the naming is like if you saw it from the top view so um, mirror and up and down is from uh, the top from the bottom I think no up and down is from like the uh, z axis axis so up and down is from uh, this this center line like in height if I want to do a mirror from uh, like from the top to the bottom it will be selection mirror and front back now you see top from to bottom uh, the next thing I will talk about the next subject is how to uh, duplicate brushes how to clone or do a duplication of uh, a selection or a brush and I will talk about um, three uh, three methods to do it so if I select this little boy here and I want to duplicate it the first method is to do a control C control V the classic control C control V and when we do that it will the duplicate will appear at the marker from the top left of the marker just as we talked uh, before like top left is the origin of the is the origin point of a cre thing we create or move for a brush so if I if my marker is here um, and here and we have it there and in the 3d view it's there when I will do a copy of this a clone a duplicate control C control V it will appear at my marker position which as I said is top left and then it starts from top left and expand to the right and bottom this is where the object will appear from the marker position like this in this in this like uh, corner or cadran of the marker this cadran here from the marker if I want to this is the first method of duplic uh, of cloning or duplicate we can also duplicate by going to edit and choose cup uh, copy and pass or we can also I will do a new one if I place my marker here I will go to I will use uh, edit and stamp or control M or you can access it by here stamp so if I do the shortcut which is control and M my marker is here control M it will do a copy pass of my selection so I don't I don't need to do control C control V I just need to do one action and it will copy it so if I do a new one here on the side I, I place my marker there and I do control M it will copy pass my selection so this is the uh, first method of uh, uh, do, uh, uh, doing a copy or a duplicate of the selection I can also uh, <laughs> sorry I, I can also do it with with a selection like if I select um, if I move that closer like this if I select those three and I want to copy pass I want to duplicate them here I will do again another stamp control M or control C control V and both three of them will be cop cop uh, duplicate because my selection was the three of them so all three are co co uh, duplicate so now for this uh, second method of duplication 
it's called a, sp a special duplication we will use ctrl c so to copy this selection and then we will use uh, i think this is a custom shortcut but i'm not sure anyway it's called in the shortcuts uh, option uh, it should be uh, whoops Sh uh, is it key it's called copy or copy class i'm not sure maybe it's not copy it's maybe like duplicate I'm actually not sure what the name of it. Fit expand blah blah blah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, I will show you um, uh, how to do it with like the menu. If I do, is it copy and then is it pass? Oh, it, it's called it's called paste alternate. So if I do that, paste alternate, it will paste on top of my selection. So now I have uh, my duplicate is like at the same is on top of my selection. So if I move if I move it, you see it was on top of it. So this is really useful to duplicate something like right where my selection is, which most of the time is what we will do. So if I do it with um, this plane here, and now I will do the shortcut, which is. Uh, Control Alt V. I'm not sure if this is the default shortcut. This is why I was checking uh, earlier in the shortcut uh, menu. Um, but yeah, Control Alt V. So first of all, Control C, my selection, and Control L. Control um, wait. Uh, Control Alt V. Okay. Control C, Control Alt V, and then it's uh, pasted on top of it. I press Z, I press Z to uh, zoom on my selection, like this, so every viewport is zoom on it. Really useful if you are like like this, like that, and I want to zoom on it, press Z. Now it's duplicate on top, like this. So again, Control Alt V, Control -Alt -V and I have a new one on top of it. So lastly the third third method to duplicate is to um, like have a selection can be like multiple object um, I will start with one like this and it's to hold D on your keyboard so hold D on your keyboard and then um, click the middle like of the object and hold the button like hold D click the middle hold hold the mouse button and drag it and it will create a copy right away from the get the get go which is really awesome so again click a selection hold D click middle drag and then you can like duplicate how much like you can duplicate and duplicate like this so this is also a really useful way of duplication. If I, I can do it with the selection, if I select, uh, I'm starting to have a lot of uh, children. <laughs> if I select this, this, and this, and I do the same thing, all D, and then drag, and then, oop, voila! I can duplicate really fast a selection. I can also do it from any view, like this one. Okay. So this is it for the all uh, the duplication method. Let's uh, organize those little boy better because I have a lot of stuff. Um, if I want, I will create a sub uh, another folder in Kiki two. So add container node, and I will call it key key two uh, two. <laughs> I don't know. So if I want to organize stuff better with uh, the node three, 
I can um, like just take one of the brush and hold mouse button and I can drag it into my Kiki 2 2 like this drag and drag uh, oops all drag okay and if I open Kiki 2 uh, Kiki 2 2 <laughs> I can see my the tree I drag in, inside of it but this is slow uh, if I want to drag like more at once I can uh, either select them here and you see they are marked with a little ch a red check mark here um, and I can then click on Kiki Tutu right click and then move tag node here click and then all of the selection has moved inside Kiki Tutu I can do the same thing instead of selecting them here I can select them uh, on the side by checking the little uh, selection box the left one if I just click it will remove the old selection and select a new one so same thing if I hold shift it will select uh, a new uh, an additional one so now I have four selected I can click Kiki to two, right click, move tag node here, and they just move in inside Kiki to two. Same thing. If I have um, multiple selected, I can remove a selection by holding Control, and it will deselect the one I click. Same thing as in uh, the viewports. Um, the next step uh, we will take a look at is um, the brush editing mode and tools. So now we will actually start doing some modeling or like editing the geometry because everything we did now was only like to move stuff around, how to clone, how to duplicate the geometry, how to rotate, how to organize it. Uh, but now we will start doing actual uh, geometry editing of the of our brushes, and we will start to do that in a brush editing mode. So remember, Control B to go inside brush ed editing mode. Um, so I will isolate. For example, I will just take uh, like this box here. I will isolate it. Um, and I will start to do some uh, modification with my uh, the tools I have in brush edit editing mode. <coughs> um, so I already talked about the how to resize it. So this is done. Uh, now we'll, we will see how to uh, split or to split uh, the the polygon of uh, the brush like how to split every comp component to do that we will uh, use control we will hold control and we will tap uh, G G G so by doing that every uh, polygon is split apart and into a new a new brush so now when I select my cube, my wonderful cube, when I select it, it will instead select only like uh, the face because every one of them is now split into a new brush. As you can see, I have more brush created from that. <coughs> and with those, those things, it's the same thing as a, as a brush. I can move it with my arrow key in one of the view like this because it's now everything is now a brush if I want to uh, put put them back together into one brush if I want to merge them into one brush I want to 
uh, select all of them now every everyone is selected and I want to hit uh, shift G G so shift G and now it's one brush again So if I created, for example, another cube like this, I, cl I duplicate it. I can merge the two uh, together with the same thing. Select the two, hit Shift G, and now the two are one, are one brush. So the two are one brush. I can do that also with like. Uh, I can split them again, control, control G. Now everything is split. And if I want, I can only merge uh, those two. So I select those two. I hit shift, uh, shift G. And now only those two are one brush like this. So this is a brush, this is a brush, and those are now a brush. So this is the this is how to organize your um, brush by using Ctrl G and Shift G. If I merge everything into one again, and if I make it really big, this or maybe not not that big, but. Uh, Okay. Now if I want to um, make this box a room, I can flip I can flip the polygon with the F key. So I select I do a selection like this or I can select multiple brush. But I I do a selection of brush and then I hit F key and it will flip every polygon inside out. So now I have a room with this method. I can also do that with any brushes like this one. I can flip it like F and now it's flipped on the other side. F, it's flipped on the other side. Same thing here. Like this is only a plane now. If I move it, I can flip. You see like this is invisible, this is visible. If I want to flip this side, I hit F and it flips to the other side. So now I go inside my room. I can flip it back with F. Same thing, flip it. Um, I will clone this to have a different one. And I will flip this one. Okay. So uh, now I have a one that is this side and one that is a room like this <coughs> um, uh, the next tool we will use is the slice tool just like in hammer for half-life 2 the hammer editor the slice tool is really similar um, to use it we will draw draw a line with this uh, space bar so if I take um, I will start with this one if I take this one and I want to split it into two brushes from like the center of it I will, will take my 2d view over my mouse and the 2d view I want to use I will go in one of the like one of the uh, grid point on the side I will hit uh, the space bar and same thing as we did before with uh, when we are creating brushes this way but here we will just create a, sp a split a line split I can it was as you can see it snapped to the grid and I can um, like move it to um, uh, the way I want to split it so now I want to split it from like the middle so I go to the other side of the brush and I need to like uh, close the split so I hit spacebar again and I draw this part like on the side like this or just you know on the side like this and now to split 
to split it I want to hit the S key. So now I, s I just split my brush into two, two brushes. And the, uh, the cool thing is that they are both closed. Like if I, I look under it, it's closed. Instead of, uh, instead of having a hole, the brush is closed, which is, is nice. Um, and as you can see, my texture is like uh, all weird, like really small. This is because I need to reset my texture coordinate, uh, which is something we will do a lot when uh, when I will in in the tutorial about texturing. To do that, you do right click, material, and um, reset texture coordinate, and it will automatically like uh, texture the the brushes. <coughs> I can also do like a split that is uh, really like detail. If I want, I, I can make my grid smaller and I can do a split from just a little corner like this. And again, spacebar, do another one, put it on like the side, hit the, hit the S key to split. And now I, I have this little corner uh, split. which I can uh, move around because it's now its own separated brush. If I want to merge both of them back together again, I can either I can merge them like this or I can put it back and I can merge uh, the two of them with um, shift G. Now both are merged, but of course I still have my split there. So the split can be used to add more uh, edge on uh, a brush with this way because I still keep my edge. Same thing here. If I uh, um, split this one, for example, like this, those two of them, and I merge them, I now have a brush that has a s edge in between. And later we can use that to uh, add more edge on a brush, because later we will see how to move the vertex in uh, geometry mode, Control G. And you can see I have, I have more vertex now in the center because I did a split and then I merged them back together. So back to brush mode, control B. Um, mm, okay. Uh, two last thing with the brush mode. We can also uh, delete delete a brush. So if uh, or delete a selection of brushes. If I select uh, like this, I can delete it with uh, the delete key. If I select two of those, I can delete them, delete key. If I, for example, I split this into multiple brushes, control G, and then <coughs> uh, I can delete like just one faces because now they are all split apart. So delete this face. <coughs> um, and the last thing uh, to know with the brushes um, is if, for example, I have this, all of those split apart, I take this wall and I do a slice in it. So spacebar, draw the line, spacebar, draw, close like the little uh, slice, then S to slice. Now I slice my wall in the, f the, the back, my back wall. Um, if I merge back those two and then I merge it back um, like with the, all my bucks with all of them merge all now uh, remember remember I slice this wall so I have a line there if I go in geometry mode I can see I have like uh, a line with vertex okay back to brush mode control B so I have a line there and an, uh, an edge if I want to um, clean it like have a clean, like uh, remove uh, 
a single edge like this, like randomly on one of the uh, polygon or face, uh, to clean a brush and remove uh, un unused edge like that, you must right click um, and then brush and merge polygon or shift E, which is the shortcut I have. I'm not sure if this is the default default shortcut, but I have this one set. So merge polygon and now the line uh, is gone. If we look here, there's a line and so shift E or merge and line is gone because now it's clean up or optimize if I can say it like that. So using uh, our the, the knowledge we uh, gain with the brushes, we will create a little corridor with this. So if I make it longer, for example, like this, and I want to add a corner, like another corridor turning around this one, I can put my marker here and I can uh, do um, like a, a special uh, duplicate on top of it. So Control C, Control Alt V, and then I can rotate it from my uh, my marker like this, and then drag it. So I have this, those two now on the side, and now I want to create an opening, so I can just um, split it from this side like this, split. Now I just say that my brush is not like closed, so it will not create new. It will not close the hole with the, a polygon, which we saw earlier. But that's okay. This is what we want. <coughs> so I have those two sections: this one, this one, in two different brush. We can, for example, like uh, pull back this section or put put it back in, like this, or snap it. If I want, I can. Um, now I want to create a hole there. Yeah, to connect this with that one. So I just split all of them apart. I can select my wall, delete, and I have a hole this side. To do the other side, the same thing. Split apart this brush, select the wall, delete, done. Um, and now I have like this corridor here. If I want to, uh, for example, create a hole there to continue it, I can again uh, Control G, split, delete. Oh, the, the the back end then I can uh, take all of those uh, brush together merge them back in, in one brush and then I can uh, clone it at OD clone it and you can see I have like a corridor like this <coughs> and then at the center if I I want uh, I can just put those together like this and if I, I want to have like a, an, a, a, an obstacle at the center I can place my marker there and at the uh, actually I want it at the middle like this and I can create um, a new box for example like this and I can just adjust it to make uh, an obstacle like that at the center and if I want to uh, like make um, like an opening I can split it this way this and this I can split it other way now I have a center I can delete my center and now I have like a, a little opening like this I can climb it up like this and I can reset my texture coordinate to have uh, to retexture everything correctly, so um, material re, uh, reset texture coordinate or this sh or using the shortcuts shortcut uh, which I made. So I either click this or I use the shortcut Control Shift Z and it will re uh, re automatically retexture everything correctly and snap perfect. So this is one of the example of uh, just by uh, just by using uh, brush brushes uh, manipulation that uh, we learn uh, in this tutorial. Um, so if I want to clone this, for example, I can just take it 
Old D and you can drag more uh, pillars like this. So yeah. Um, in the next part, we will talk about uh, the geometry mode uh, and all the good stuff with it. So now we will do more like actual modeling with this, with that, which we don't need to do that much because only working in uh, brush mode we can do most of the work already. Um, but uh, we can do that. So um, to go in, uh, to go in geometry mode, it's uh, again remember Control uh, G with um, with uh, or selection because we cannot uh, select in geometry mode. We need to go. We need to be in brush mode and do a selection that we want to edit like more in detail in geometry mode, like this pillar. Um, and when I am in geometry mode, control uh, G, G, G um, I have access to my edge and my vertex. And with, with that, I can uh, extrude, extrude a face or polygon out of an object to create like more, just like in a 3D application. So if I take like this face right here, I just have to over my mouse uh, on the face I want to like select. Um, and then I can extrude it by using a Q. So if I hold Q and move my mouse, it will extrude, uh, it will extrude a new, uh, like a new face from it. And now I have like those new face. I can extrude this one now. Uh, oops, I mean, oh, this one is not accessible because it's like, that's weird, it's like not built in properly yet. Uh, like as you can see, the UV are like all stretch, but I can extrude this one, for example, like this. I can also extrude from the inside, but it will create like, you know, like easy fighting. So I, ex I extrude it out. And if I hold shift, it will uh, snap to the grid. So I can extrude it by also by snapping uh, to the grill. But normally to do that, I want to hold shift first and then it will uh, snap perfectly. Like as you can see, it snapped to the to the ground uh, checker uh, perfectly with uh, by holding shift. And it is using the uh, the grid size we have currently currently to do that. <coughs> um, so now, as I said, those faces are all stretched. To fix them, you want to um, go in brush mode, I think, and do what we did with the um, uh, merge polygon. I think that's it. And then those faces are all like recalculated correctly. So this is why you want to use a shortcut. Is because if you uh, go, if you extrude a, a polygon like uh whoops i want to snap it ah this one is not this one was this one wasn't snapped to the grid we can correct this by moving the vertex we will do that later um but if i extrude like the top part like that um and i want like to fix the new f uh, polygon that are created i want to go like rapidly brush mode then uh, merge shift E my shortcut which is brush merge polygon and then go back to geometry mode so it, it's pretty fast you just like control B shortcut to fix the polygon shift E and then back to geometry mode like to fix the the new polygon and also when I go back in brush mode I can also like um, recalculate the UV of the texture, which is again its reset texture coordinate, which will um, make all the texture back to uh, automatically like recalculate, which uh, is really nice. Um, so that's that's the method. 
uh, geometry mode doing like uh, an extrude then if I have I'm finished I go back to brush mode then fix the polygon shift E and then reset recalculate texture coordinate like BAM like this with a shortcut <coughs> so that's the the steps when we are like adding new polygon this way um, if I want to extrude but um, extrude a new a new brush out of the extrusion we will need to uh, hold the mm, I think it's the control control key so if I hold control and shift to snap to grid and then all so I hold three things I hold control shift and Q to extrude and I extrude it will extrude a new brush like this brush is new and then I uh, then when I'm done I stop holding everything and now I have a new brush out of my extrusion so if I go to brush mode I can select it as a new brush like this is a brush and this is my new brush created out of an extrusion and again I need to clean it control uh, shift E and control shift Z to re uh, recalculate the UV of the texture so pretty pretty useful then this is a new brush so I can do whatever I want with it and you can see it also like automatically close my hole like on both sides <coughs> and it's all snapped to the grid and the texture UV is all like perfectly like the checker is perfectly snapped to the grid also because of the automatic texture uh, when I automatically like recalculate the UV <coughs> except this one because this one is not on the grid well it no it's not like you can see so um, how to move individual vertex we will see that soon I also want to show you how to uh, delete a single polygon from this brush which is now much more complicated than uh, those for example or this one if I want to isolate this one I can uh, do what we did before to isolate it so I can work on it uh, like more clean cleanly and see everything <coughs> So if I want to delete a single polygon from it, again, uh, in brush mode, it deletes the whole brush. But if I go in uh, geometry mode, I can over my mouse in w on one of the polygon and I can hit the, um, excuse me, <laughs> I can hit my, it's not the delete, I think delete will delete like one of the vertex yeah it's not delete it delete kind of like yeah delete delete one of the vertex or edge and not a face i think um so what control z control z what you want to do is to delete uh only a face so over your mouse on one of like the faces like this one on top and you want to hit a page down and pa this will delete uh, the polygon so I can delete this one, this one like this one, delete this one can delete this one also like that if I want to uh, fill fill up the hole we created uh, there's no bridge or fill hole function but I can add um, a brush on top of it simply so if I go in brush mode and I split everyone apart that's this is why being this is why isolating the or object we are or brush or object we are we are working on it's really important to isolate a selection we want to do a lot of work on it because uh, it's easier after when we split everything it's easier to put them back together if we do like a whole selection of it this is why we want to isolate selection like object like this so I just split everything brush apart and I'm now in brush mode of course to do that 
So to close the hole, I can just duplicate one like like this one. Like it uh, all D, I slide it here and bam, done. This is filled. And now I can put everything back together if I want. Brush mode, shift G. Now everything is back together. Um, so now how to move uh, the vertex in uh, geometry mode. So there's multiple ways to move vertex. Um, when you over your mouse over, uh, on it, it will become green. This is the vertex that is now like kinda selected. <coughs> and to move that vertex... Uh, wait, he's doing an uh, auto backup. To move that like vertex here. I want to do it from one of the 2D view, otherwise it will like move it from the camera which we don't like, as usual. <coughs> so I want to snap those two back on the grid. And when I mean those two, from one of the top views, uh, since this one and this one are both like at the same coordinate from the top view, it will move both of them, which is really, really cool, really useful. So if I move like, like I'm, I will show you from the 3D view from he here, I will move those two back to the grid. So over your mouse on it, hold V key, and then it snaps to the uh, uh, nearest uh, grid points. <coughs> Same thing here, and bam, they are snapped, both of them. <coughs> um, so as you can see, when I over my mouse, it become green. I hold the V key, and then I drag my mouse to snap it to the uh, nearest grid uh, intersection or point like this so this is how you can move a vertex you can do that in a any of the 2d view of course and the next thing is what if I want to move uh, multiple vertex together uh, I need to select them first instead of just like overing my mouse uh, on the one I want to move I need to make a, an actual selection of uh, vertex and in this editor, they call it a tag. It's called like a tagging vertex. Or like selecting them, it's tagging vertex, they become yellow. So if I want to select, uh, for example, all the vertex on the top of this brush, I just have to take a good view like this or from my 2D view and make a selection like this to like you know they are all yellow now this means they are selected or tagged um, and to to uh, untag them or deselect them you can just go in you can go back in brush mode and then go back in geometry mode to like reset all of them so again I will reselect them from uh, one of my 2D view like this, all selected from the top and now to move all of those together I will use I will hold the B key on my uh, keyboard so I hold the B key and now I drag my mouse and I can move like every one of them from one of the 2D view and as you can see my texture is updating also at the same time it is not stretching, the texture is updating. So if I can make it a taller with this way. Um, I can also scale them down with the W key. So if I hold W, it will... Uh, it doesn't scale every one of them, it only scales like the over selection. To scale every one of them, I'm not sure how. There must be a way, but I, I don't think I did that once, so I don't know. But you can scale uh, one of like the f polygon, like you over your mouse and hold W, and it will scale like only this polygon or this polygon like this. <laughs> of course, they are not. They are out. Um, they are not snap to the grid right now, they are all uh, off 
the grid but the editor won't care you can do that it's just that if you want to do more like organic stuff you need to be out of the grid uh, but most of the time you want to be on the grid of course so I can just either I can like resnap them to the grid individually or I can just control uh, Z to return um, if I want to move a vertex not on the grid like uh, like we did before for example this one if I move I over my mouse I hold V and you see it snapped to the grid if I don't want that I can hold V and shift and this will move the vertex freely freely out of the grid we can also do that with a oops we can also do that with a, um, a selection of vertex like old V and then can oops move it out of the grid also work with a, a selection of tag vertex like we did before um, <coughs> Uh, the next thing we will take a look is how to uh, inset a polygon. Insetting a polygon is another uh, operation of modeling that is popular in 3D software. There is like extrusion with, like we did and now we will do an inset. Inset is creating an, um, a smaller polygon inside of a polygon. So if I want to inset like this face right here I need to hold uh, shift and w and it will create uh, I will just show you from a 2d view because it's better like this I'm doing it my 3d view because it doesn't matter so shift w and you see uh, from my 2d view that it creates a new polygon inside of my polygon and of course I can snap those vertex back on the grid if I want I need to make the grid smaller and I can snap them to the grid um, so now I have like this type of shape and if I want I can extrude each of those or like the center so shift to snap grid Q extrude and then it will extrude only like uh, this middle uh, this middle new face that we created with the inset <coughs> So I can do another one just for fun. I can do like this one. So inset, then extrude, and we have like a Lego block type of uh, shape. Ah, Lou, Lou. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? Fais pas ça. <laughs> ouais, le, ouais mais la vidéo il existe déjà. You don't need to do that. <laughs> ok. Bon. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is um, for the inset. Of course, we can also delete like um, like if we want to create a window, for example, we can. Um, do an inset of this face right here like this and then we can delete that <coughs> oops excuse me uh, we need to recalculate the <coughs> the new polygon again with both with extrude and inset we need to uh, recalculate the polygon with going brush mode and then um, merge polygon or shift uh, shift E for my own shortcut like the color change a bit this means it's done and now we can delete or work with our new polygon like delete it so now I have <coughs> I have a window or a hole inside of my thing um, if I want to yeah okay next thing apart from that 
yeah if I want to add a vertex on one of the edge or delete one if I want to delete <coughs> a single vertex I think we can just uh, it needs to be a vertex that is not useful otherwise it will break uh, the face but okay so just let's add a vertex on this edge so over the mouse on the edge we want right click geometry split edge and it will add a new vertex on it that we can move and if we don't want it anymore we can over mouse over it because this vertex is like a non-useful vertex because it like uh, it's a part of it doesn't hold uh, an integral structure like this one this one hold the this face this face so this one is important but this one we just added it doesn't hold any structure integral structure of the brush so if we delete it it will not matter so old mouse press delete I think it's delete and yeah you see now it's it's gone <coughs> um what else what else yeah I think this is it <coughs> oh. uh, so the last thing I will show you with the uh, geometry um, it uh, editing or I, I think is the last thing and maybe I have like more uh, it's how to triangulate uh, brush so if I have like a, a invalid brush with a, like concave element or a single vertex that are like stretched or like just weird and the brush is like invalid um, we can triangulate it to like uh, add automatically add edges uh, to make it valid again which create a uh, ugly uh, wireframe but at least we have a valid brush so let's see that so if I create uh, I'm going in uh, geometry mode and I will create a, a weird shaped plane so I will just drag randomly some it need to be at least like uh, Red, red it will not create it it need to be at least uh, pink which is invalid but it will still create it so like this 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 like that so okay so this and then I'm closing it now I have uh, I have an invalid brush because if I look uh, from uh, the bottom of it this is a plane we have like a weird uh, flip face like this that's because the brush is invalid with all all of those like concave elements um, so we, w we can triangulate it um, so to do that uh, we first need to have a vertex that is uh, not like coplanar like not flattened so because all, all now is like flat so to tell the engine that the brush is really invalid we need to move one of the vertex up so in brush mode uh, like move one of the vertex it can be any, any, any one if I move this one like this um, then I can go back to brush mode and I can brush and triangulate brush or control E so BAM and now my brush is triangulated and it's valid again we don't have weird uh, inverse face we have like a valid brush <coughs> and we can of course move uh, and, and every single vertex again like this to create a shape Uh, so we will put we will put our knowledge to the test and I will create um, a room like in only one brush I will create room window to another room so I will take a box or just create a new box box okay zoom on it 
I will tell every step, of course, so it will take more time, but that's okay. I will just make that like bigger room. This is a room, I will flip it. So now I have a room. I will do all my thing from one brush. So, uh, geometry mode. I will inset this face like this. I will, I will isolate it. I forget to do that. So isolate, selection, move this. Okay. So uh, inset. Now I'll move the vertex. I snap the vertex like this. I can make a smaller window, like maybe like this. Okay. So um, with. Uh, I think the middle is still valid but to be sure I can go brush mode clean back to geometry and now I will extrude this so I will extrude it on a smaller grid from the top uh, from the side I mean um, and I will uh, extrude it so shift Q all drag mouse to extrude it and you can see my top view that it's up to the grid because I have shift all held now I have this now I want to extrude it again to do uh, the um, well actually no yes to do like the back face back wall of the other room so again uh, shift uh, I don't need to snap it on the grid so I just extrude it then I will scale this new polygon uh, not the this is the wrong one scale I yeah this is correct like you see I'm scaling my new extrusion to do like the back wall like this and I can snap back those vertex on the grid this this so now I have um, a back wall I can make it bigger uh, change the grid size tap this up this down now I have room uh, a window with the you know like polygon and I have a back wall <coughs> um, so now from this side I'm I think I'm gonna delete I will reset my polygon with shift E or uh, brush merge to reset I will delete this polygon here to have like this and now I'll create uh, another room and since I have all of like this those um, faces like that I will just duplicate uh, the room I have so in brush mode, I will just split er everything apart. I will select only like those, like this. I will merge them and I will clone that for my new room, clone it to the other side. And I will do a mirror of it. So we were using all of the knowledge we learned, now I will mir mirror it to flip it. So uh, selection mirror selection and I think it's uh, left right so now uh, the all the all we add here is now at the other side so the uh, room looks like this there's a hole and now I have created uh, two room uh, with a window in between oh I don't <laughs> I forget to close that I don't think I uh, uh, yeah I forget like to merge that part of the wall so I can just uh, either clone, I can clone one of the wall or I can create a new wall by with, uh, with one of the creation method we learn. So to do that we want to have the, the marker uh, in one of the corner. I think it's this corner and this like that. And it uh, we want to draw, like you, you see the marker is like a line. So now we can draw the wall in geometry mode to only have a, f a polygon like a plane. So um, I need to be in the good view. I, I think it's this. 
uh, whoops, I draw my new uh, shape. I close it, and now I created a plane right at the good spot. And now I have two room with a window in between. And I, I can reorganize everything as I want. If I want this whole room now to uh, be with this wall, I can just sel uh, shift select this wall and then merge everything together, shift G. And now I have all of this organized into one brush. And all of this I can organize it into one brush, shift G to merge. And I can organize uh, this uh, window interior into one brush, Chip G. So I can uh, reorganize everything as I want with Control G to explode into parts and Shift G to merge back everything in one brush, like my selection, just as we learned. Um, so in uh, reorgani reorganizing uh, elements into a new brush is really important because now this being one brush I can easily uh, duplicate it uh, into a new piece so if I want to clone this this inside and this if I want to clone this piece I can just clone it like this drag and have it perfectly snap and now I have this clone like that so really 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 cool really really uh, useful to know how to work with all of this. Um, and uh, another big uh, important thing is when you want when you are uh, reorganizing that, uh, you want your bonding box uh, to be a cube shape most of the time because it's easier to work with. Like you, you see, like this. This selection is uh, now I isolated it, but this selection is uh, a cube. So this means if I need to rescale it, it is really easy, like to just rescale it, and it will uh, rescale correctly, like this. You see it rescale correctly. Um, oh, okay. Now I just re uh, I un I unhided everything, and I have. <laughs> all of my elements like close together like all the geometry I created so that's pretty that's already a lot of geometry for this tutorial <coughs> for uh, I'm sorry I'm going really slow right now because I need to explain at the same time but you can do that uh, pretty fast when you uh, when you know what you are doing and you're using the shortcuts um, so as I said, I want to have all my brushes into like, um, oops, into a cube shape. Like this, this is a cube shape. The thing. This is a cube shape. This is a cube shape because it's planar, so it's a, a square. So if I want to resize it, uh, I actually no, this is not a cube shape because. Uh, because of this window, so if I resize it, the window will like uh, resize resize out of the grill. So I have a, a good example here that to show how it can go wrong. If I resize the top here, uh, the middle will be recalculated to like average. So this means it will be uh, out of the grill. But we can easily fix that with uh, uh, moving uh, vertex around, of course. But this is why we want most of the time to have everything uh, into cube uh, bonding box because it's easy to reshape. For example, uh, this this corridor which looks like a mess. I will delete that, delete that, uh, delete this. Um, so this corridor. If I want to reorganize it, organize it correctly, I will uh, merge like this portion into one brush, and this create a, a correct, <coughs> a correct bonding uh, cube bonding box. My same thing for this one. 
this this is basically a cube so this if I merge that it creates a correct cube bonding box this also so when I want to rework my uh, level design it is really easy because if I resize this it resize like like snap on the grid and perfect like everything when I resize it like this with the handle everything like will be snapped to the grid always because the selection is a cube bonding box again so this is very important of course if you are working with like cylinder or like round shape or organic more organic stuff like terrain um, where the vertex can be like a bit any, uh, everywhere uh, you cannot respect that but that's that's normal because you just you just can't but when you're doing like corridor or rooms you want to respect that uh, uh, cube bonding box rule to uh, be able to resize all your level really fast so I will do uh, one last test uh, which will be to create a um, hole inside of a plane like a circle circular hole uh, this will test what uh, we just learned with uh, everything uh, so to do that I will move on the side uh, uh, with the marker on the side of uh, my scene I will create something new finally I will create a cylinder uh, I will do a 24 side and the important part is to have every one of like the quarter of it to match um, a vertex on the cylinder because we only do like a quarter of the work <coughs> Um, so I will now draw a plane that match the vertex of uh, one quarter of it to only do one quarter of the work instead of the full work and then I will take my one quarter and like duplicate it and do a mirror uh, of every quadrant every side um, so let's do that just check my cylinder if it looks alright I can snap it and I can isolate it too to have a clear view of everything. I uh, go to geometry mode and I will draw my uh, plane. Can zoom in with two on my uh, top view and then spacebar. And I will start to add a vertex at every intersection. This one, this one, this one. Uh, this one spacebar this one it did to be uh, the line need to be uh, not red uh, and last one like one here then just close that then in geometry, uh, geometry mode I can move my vertex on the grid and I can move every of those uh, new vertex on every vertex of the cylinder and something I didn't tell you is that you can also snap vertex to another uh, snap vertex to the edges of uh, another brush <laughs> excuse me not another brush but the same brush so we need to merge both of them we need to merge that with the cylinder shift G then we can match each of the vertex with the uh, it's the E E en français <laughs> In English, it's E, the E, E key. Uh, old E instead of V to have it snap. So you see, like it snapped to the edge, like that, that, like that. So it's way easier to adjust everything. And I think I forgot one. Yeah, I forgot one. So we will add a new vertex. Right click on edge, geometry split edge, add new vertex, then move that bitch to the here. Then this one we want to move it to the, uh, snap it to the edge, like here. So V key, snap. And I can maybe snap it higher or bigger grid like uh, like this okay 
So now you're uh, back to uh, brush mode. Now what I have is something like that. So I want to split uh, again the brush. So split, uh, shift G to split. I can select, uh, I can, what I can, I can select like everything and then deselect this part, control, and then make the cylinder whole again. So I have two brush. Okay. And this brush now has like a, you know, there's, there's a hole in it now. So what I can do is to um, copy that to, uh, well, what the first thing I can do is like duplicate this cylinder to have like a backup. Then take this cylinder and we can flip it like this. Remove the top. So con uh, geometry mode and page down to the polygon of the top. And we have this. Then I can snap this with the, that. So just snap on the grid like this. Now I have that. Now I can clone this uh, to make like clone this quarter of the work and do a full of it. So I just have to duplicate it. So control uh, control C control V. And it duplicate from the marker top left like that. So I can just um, uh, do a, uh, I can rotate it like this, and then do a mirror uh, section mirror, and then I think it's up down. No, it's not up down. Oh yeah, the geometry is wrong too, like because it's the the brush is not valid because it's uh, concave. I think it's not valid. I don't know. Just to be sure, I will triangulate it. So just move one of the vertex up like that. Then control E, control E, then move it back down. Like that. And I can move it out of the grid because this is like round, so we don't really care about the grid. So just to be you just have to move it out of the grid like approximately correct we don't really care about like if there's like really small hole we will not see it and there's no leak with uh, this editor we don't really care about that so control uh, go back in brush mode now we delete that we take this one we'll do a clone of uh, this one that is now uh, valid so mirror uh, oops, it's not up down, it's uh, from back. Then rotation from the. Ah, it's wrong, it's, not, it's mirror. Uh, front back, okay, it's from back. Do it again. I can just clone it on top and then like rotate it. So clone it on the top, control C, control L, V. Then. Uh, rotate it like this. Control C, Control Add V. Rotate it. I don't even need to do a mirror. I just have to rotate it from the center. Then I have, I have what I uh, I ask. I have a plane, my plane, a ground with a, a circle all in it. Um, <coughs> and if I want, I can merge all of them together if I want, or not. I like to have them like this. And the last thing I wanted is to have like a little uh, border. So I will take my backup. I will put it so I will, uh, put it up like this. Like I will up. And I will just scale it uh, like that. And with this I will be able to uh, do a inset of it for both sides, but I will do just do one side and then clone it, so I will delete the bottom, like this. Then I will do an inset, 
with in uh, geometry mode so shift double uh, w to like do an inset as you can see in my 2d view it does like uh, it create a new polygon inside of my polygon then i will do an extrude uh and inside of it with uh i need to be in uh, 10 centimeter in my 3d view 10 centimeter i will do a extrude hold in shift q to um, um, be on the grid so hold shift q and uh, extrude from the inside and you can see i can snap on my grid like this just like like that then i just have to uh, delete uh, the center face so uh, Highlight uh, all over the mouse on the face and page down to delete the face of the polygon. And now I have my like my border, but if I allow, of course, I have my hole under it. So what I can do is um, uh, go back to uh, geometry, uh, excuse me, brush mode, and I will isolate this selection. I will um, split it so I have everything like separated because I just want to select the top of it and then clone it under okay so I can just select like that and you can uh, deselect by holding control like if you select everything you can hold control and just select like the just deselect the bottom so I have only the top selected and I can clone that to the bottom so all D drag at the bottom like that now it's drag at the bottom but of course the face the polygon has, are facing the same side uh, as the top if I look inside of it you can see the polygon are facing uh, the top because I just cloned the top so the only thing I need to do is to flip it so F key F key in brush mode it will flip and I created like a, like a border and if I want I can make all of this um, its own brush by shift, uh, shift G now it's its own brush and I can recalculate the texture if I want like this and now I have um, I have what I ask it I have a floor uh, with a cylindrical hole inside of it and with a little border and uh, if I know what I'm doing I can do that pretty fast without talking and just like doing the shortcut and doing it fast you can do it pretty fast if uh, you have shortcut and you know what you're doing and of course that you are not speaking at the same time explaining everything <laughs> but uh, yeah so that's it for this uh, tutorial on uh, creating brushes and editing the geometry of brushes both in brush mode and in geometry mode thank you for watching